Welcome to the first round of the second CODS Open. We're debating one of the motions with some regrets hurt mentality. On the problem, we have nothing to lose. On opposition, we have made Korea great again. Uh, without any further delays, we would like to start the debate with the Prime Minister. Yeah. extremely useful millions of years ago. When human mankind relied on each other in order to survive as cavemen. But in the 21st century, herd mentality presents significant problems that undermines individual choices in a rational way. In other words, choices that would be good for individuals, choices that would be good for society as a whole. Because on our side of the house, we strongly support informed, rational decisions. When individuals take choices by taking into account things like morality, the consequences of their choices, utility, and whatnot. And we think that these kinds of choices are the choices that lead to good consequences for individuals, at least the progression of society, in contrast of herd mentality, which we want to characterize as being unrational, irrational, and be characterized as simply following the choices of other people because there's a mass group heading in a particular direction in society. And we think that's extremely harmful. So why is it that herd mentality exists? We think there are two crucial reasons why it exists. The first is, herd mentality is extremely easy for individuals in the sense that it lowers the cost of decision making. In other words, when everyone is deciding a particular direction, it's much more easier for an individual to simply follow that group as our evolutionary uh, biological genes, for example, have all taught us. Secondly, everyone wants to be part of the majority group, Mr. Speaker. In other words, it's extremely difficult for individuals to say, I want to disagree compared to the majority, which is why individuals have a natural tendency to follow the herd mentality, which is something that we see extremely pervasive within society. Then, as the first speaker, we want to talk about a couple of harms, right? I'm going to talk about a harms in terms of how this leads to major harms in terms of politics within the economy and on the individual. And NC is going to deal upon a specific area in terms of advertisements, which we think is extremely important, which characterizes one of the defining activities of human society in the 21st century. So, let's look into what happens. I want to present four unique harms, right? The first harm is that this kind of herd mentality, Mr. Speaker, prevents objective analysis of issues that people have in front of them. And what, I'll give you an example. So let's say, for example, a lot of the bubbles, of the economic problems that we see in society today are actually directly a result of herd mentality. For example, everyone is buying particular stocks because everyone says it's good. Everyone is entering into the estate market because everyone says it's good. And this is spiraled by the media, by economists and everyone, which often leads to extremely negative outcomes within society. And the reason why people are able to make these choices without thinking a lot is because they believe that the herd is trustworthy. They say the herd says it's okay. I mean, like thousands of people, thousands of people are saying it's okay. This prevents them from making their own calculation or their own analysis of whether I should invest in a particular company, or whether I should look into certain economic other factors, because those things are extremely difficult to do by the individual, and even though they should do it, it's much more easy to follow the herd, right? That's why like following the decision makers of like people who recommend stocks on TV often leads to a terrible outcomes based on my experience as a speaker, right? So it prevents them making objective analysis of issues because following the herd mentality is extremely easy. Secondly, we also say this blinds them from seeing important issues that are extremely relevant to them. So what we tell you is that in politics, for example, we think what's important for the individual voter is to look at their economic policies, is to look at what kind of values that person supports and whatnot. But what, when everyone was talking about whether like Obama, whether his name like kind of like sounded like a terrorist or terrorist like leader, and the media spiraled that and everyone was talking about that, it prevents them from really objectively looking at important issues that they have to consider, right? And we think that's an extremely big problem when the media, in response to her mentality, because the media is extremely 
extremely smart, right? They know that the people function in this kind of way, which is why the media more often only focus on these kinds of issues that are actually extremely unimportant to voters, if you think about it in an objective sense. We think that in this sense, her mentality is extremely problematic because it prevents them, prevents society from discussing important issues towards them. Thirdly, we also say that one of the biggest problems of her mentality is that it actually encourages and leads to violently and morally culpable behavior. And what I mean by this is that it makes them less accountable in terms of the moral standards that we set in society. For example, in India, when people, when men, hundreds of men, drove women on the streets during a protest, why would they do that? That they were an individual on the street. They would never harass a woman. But when group people Groups of people harass them together, they find it morally easy to, you know, make that decision to do it because everyone else is doing it. I'm not going to be criticized for this. They also shield themselves from the grasses of the group, which is why we also say that often it also leads to protests becoming extremely violent, right? Normally you would not pro uh, protest in a violent way, but when everyone protests in a violent way, when everyone is throwing rocks towards the police and rocks through windows, it's much more easier for individuals to make that choice. We think in this sense, one of the most atrocious atrocities like that happened in history, like from Hitler, for example, as a speaker, were often because individuals were able to, um, individuals saw other soldiers engaging in these kinds of atrocities, which is why they themselves felt that it would be okay to do so. And only then, when the war was over, when individuals started rationally, did they realize that these kinds of decisions were not good, Mr. Speaker, right? Her mentality leads to this kind of violently immoral behavior, and it's easy to happen when people are subject to these kinds of things. The final thing I want to touch upon is that because individuals have a tendency within society to engage in herd mentality, more often this leads to enormous abuse. For example, I'll just give you an example. Although we can't verify this actually happened based on, but let's just <laughs> believe that it did happen. For example, in South Korea, we saw our national security agency actively using the internet to you know, create uh, to create certain opinions on the internet by posting on certain opinions in order to criticize certain political parties, right? Why would they do that? They do that because they know that people respond to these kind of things. So when they, when we found out that there were like hundreds of thousands of these kinds of comments made by this government agency, we think that governments often abuse a direct public opinion in a particular way, an extremely in a harmful way, to their benefit, which is why we think this undermines like democracy and proper deliberation processes of our society. Mr. Speaker, we think that her mentality has served a useful purpose in the past. But in the 21st century, it presents more harm than benefits, which is why we're extremely proud to propose. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now to open the case for the opposition of Chad, the leader of the opposition <laughs> Seven minutes, right? Yep. So with that word and set in today's status quo, in today's debate, we believe that our role that we have to do is that we have to prove that on a comparative basis, there are more positive attributes that come from the herd mentality. So we're going to do two things in our debate, in today's debate. First, we're going to prove to you the justification, why it is morally and philosophically both justified and good, the herd mentality is good for human mankind. Secondly, we're going to go on to the comparative basis on whether herd mentality in modern society leads to more harms or leads to more benefits. If we win, if we prove to you that the benefits outweigh the harms even in today's modern society, we believe that our opposition will take this debate on. And first, let's go on to a couple of laws. Firstly, they came up and told you about, first let's clarify the terms of regret. We believe that the term of regret is that when there, it is a comparative, again, on a comparative basis that you are making the choice out of the worser choice, 
best possible choice out of possible worst choices. There can be cho there, that choice can have some kind of negative attributes. Sometimes it can lead to cases of severity. However, we need to look at the bigger picture as a society. We have to look at the macro level society in today's debate. Now, second, firstly, they talked about how everybody their gave their whole case, pre premise case, was basically a long list of practical harms that could come from the herd mentality. So let's tackle one of these. Firstly, they gave one one about the stock market, how all people enter the stock market and make a lot of mistakes. Now the thing is, yes, there are times where there are mistakes that lead from herd mentality. We agree to that. However, Mr. Speaker, we have to note the fact that the major reason why in current society we have counter herd mentalities, social people that are rational, that come together, and these are the things that win in today's status quo. We see the Occupy Wall Street movement, we see the people going against the Wall Street bankers and going against the media and protesting, and we see in often cases this justice that comes out the rationality and the empathy towards other human beings that end up in the end. And that's what we will prove in our today's space. And secondly, we see the cases because of the stock market, because of this media using all these kind of difficulties, we see in the moment, we see in the United States that liberal policies are much getting much more safe. We see the field of Bernie, Bernie Sanders having much more implication. Without these kinds of mistakes from herd mentality, we've never had the counter mentality yeah. that could in the end bring forth the utilitarian form of positive effect in today. Sorry, they talked about Obama. The thing was Obama was elected. And the thing was they said the herd mentality about him being a black person, him being a Muslim. The fact is the counter of the herd, herd mentality of people who supported Obama's um, economic and social policies. The herd mentality that said they were fed up with Bush's <laughs> fucked up policies were the ones that won in the end. And we have seen this again and again through society, through history, through inductive reasoning. We think it's better to assume that it will happen in, based on these precedents. Okay, yeah. Lastly, let's talk about a group of people in India. The fact was, they talked about a hundred people who killed a woman in the in India. The fact is, herd mentality never exists because of other people doing it wrong. It exists because there is some kind of mentality, some kind of immorality, some kind of social that you already existed. And people embrace it, it just makes it easier for these people to do. But we believe, Mr. Speaker, when these kind of actions are done in this kind, from herd mentality, we're much more easier to let, to let other social movements to go against the Indian. We see because of these major incidents that are driven by herd mentality, the people who are killed in women in Korea, we see feminist movements rising in India. We see the United States, United Nations having more observers sent to India, and we see that we are actually debating about the motion because of that herd mentality. In a bigger macro level, we believe that their herd mentality leading to these, reviewing these kind of social problems within India serves a more positive effect. And if that is the result, we do not regret that. Yeah, Let's just sir. All of the things you talked about, Wall Street, Bernie Sanders, is a cognitive, rational response to a harm that has been assessed because of the US government. We don't move. The thing is, Mr. Speaker, I'll cut this point to the top of For starting, we do not believe that herd mentality is mutually exclusive to rationality in any yeah, case, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Firstly, we think herd mentality exists for a reason. Yes, we talked about cavemen, we talked about genetics. The fact is, it exists because human beings cannot know every single part and they're trusting other people. Why? Yeah, because yeah. human people are rational. We, are, we operate under the basis, we live under a democracy because we believe that human beings can make a rational choice. And firstly, Mr. Speaker, we believe that the reason why people other, believe other people is they have the main nature that other people are also rational. But secondly, Mr. Speaker, we don't believe that herd mentality itself can conquer one's mind totally, Mr. Speaker. We think we think that the actions of the herd is also of combining the moral capitalist of why or how people act. Sometimes it gets too severe. But in throughout history, throughout society, we see that all it is the cases where the rational people go again go against them. The majority of people go against these minor severe people and in the end always come out to win and beat these people in the democratic process. We don't regret that. And secondly, even in the circumstances where there are people are social animals and they fit in, we think that there's nothing wrong with people trying to fit in with other people. Why? Because throughout, and again, in a, even at a practical level, we have shown throughout history again and again, when there's something wrong, when there's something big such as wrong, such as the stocks being um, abused by the media, we see that people actually go against them and people learn from their mistakes. And oftentimes they tackle it through counter herd mentalities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, which leads us directly on to our second argument. Yes. Now the thing is, Mr. Speaker, now we, the second argument is about how countering herd mentality exists. Now, there are times where people make mistakes. We agree with that. There are times where people try to you know, for Donald Trump. There are people why herd mentality leads to social discrimination or racism, Mr. Speaker. We agree with that. Mr. Speaker, throughout history and throughout society, these forms of herd mentality never last, Mr. Speaker. We've shown you why. Because most people are rational. Most people are driven by empathy. The majority of people, when they see a person being killed or gunned down, they react to that. 
Mr. Speaker. Now, the thing is, we can see that why Donald Trump is having the 30%. We're seeing more, more counter herd mentalities for, because of this, for Bernie Sanders. We see in the racism, we see counter herd mentalities that are brief for the black power movement, the anti, the anti so like civil rights movement that was also done by a herd mentality, Mr. Speaker. Now, even in the cases where there was really severe fascism, the Nazis, they said, in the end, because of the herd mentality that stigmatized the majority of people, we saw the United Nations being sent. We saw the human rights being counted. We saw Germany and no, no longer any fascist governments will ever appear on are appearing on today's uh, today's global scale, Mr. Speaker. Now, lastly, in a comparative basis. Why is this better? Because in modern society, Mr. Speaker, there are problems in this world. There are people in India who believe, there's a social uh, mentality in India that go against women. There are mentalities there that go against democracy and human rights. We believe the best way to combat that, the best way that's improved throughout society is the people's social movements. Why? Because it's not simply about people following other people. Most times, a lot of times, herd mentality is the people with certain rational groups coming together. And we believe when it is a lone wolf going against an established social kind of problem, Problem, we win it's very hard. However, when a lot of people, when there are enormous amounts of people for the same group going against the herd, following their mentality, and going against it, it's much, much easier for us to extract these kinds of immortalities in a world, in an imperfect world, where the mortality exists. Mr. Speaker, the thing is, in today's society, in the historical standpoint, to an inductive lesson, we show you that all the problems that come from herd mentality are dead and gone on in the ground. In the current status quo, we live in a society, our democracy, our human rights are all formed by the herd mentality of social movements and of revolutions. We believe we do not regret any part of that. Thank you. Now I understand why people who are naturally bad cannot debate well. The problems of their policy, they are you know, confusing the, what is the cause of the problems and what makes the human's behavior not well. Because if I'm doing the nice stuff, if I'm helping the grandfather, if I'm helping you, judge, wiping your ass, I don't need any herd mentality. Because people as a general morality says, you can do it. But the moment you have to do something goes against your moral code, then you need someone, large groups of the people, you know, help you back, support you, and justify your own behavior. That is why herd mentality is always caused by problems, and be herd mentality was used by charismatic people like Hitler. The first the large groups of people have to do the certain immoral stuff because other than that, people is not going to follow the opinions, right? But more than that, even if they are true, right? People can do the good things based on the hard mentality. We think that is also wrong. People don't have to do the nice stuff. They must follow their own rational decisions with well-informed choices, right? If 99% of the Korean citizens do the nice stuff because Korean citizens want to be nice, then we think that's morally wrong. We don't think that is the justifiable and beneficial society. Because we are not living in the North Korea, dude. We are living in the South Korea, even if Korean president is fucking up us. But I trust the Korean government more than you guys, right? With that, I have one argument. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why you know, like TV ad advertisement and trend, the, and then uh, the TV advertisement and trend blocking people from finding true happiness in their own body. Before we move to my first argument, I have a several response, right? Our first argument gave you the great argument why informed choice is way more better than random hard mentality choices, right? Because choice must be mine. Choice must be well informed. Choice must be analyzed on harms and benefits, and which makes me more happier, right? That makes our society and human being better. But they just ignore it. If people do a you know, great job, then it doesn't matter. But I don't think there is a great society. My speaker gave you a great argument and harms, but there was simple response. The response is this. You know what? We can have a counterbalance argument and hard mentality. We think that is also wrong. If there's no hard mentality, people just follow their moral code. We don't have to 500 years of abusing and killing and raping a black dude, right? The reason why those white dude can abuse the black dude because there was a problems hard mentality, right? So your policy is the cause of the problems. So even if you have a counterbalancing argument and narrative, we think they can solve all the problems 
from the start. More than that, they said, you know what, the people through rationality cannot be conquered by the herd mentality. That's also wrong. Everybody knows if you invest a lot of money in the stock, you might lose a lot of money because small portion of people like um, Warren Buffett can, you know, earn a lot of money. But the problem is like me and Joe and you know, Seth and everybody, we are investing money in the stock because we see the TV and the people who wear a nice suit always said, you must invest stock other than you'll be fucked. But rational human beings shouldn't invest a lot of money in that. But we are doing it because our rationality always goes against that hard mentality, right? That is why this is not going to work under their policy. But more than that, hard mentality cannot make the expertise expressing their own opinion. Even if we see the expertise says the investing money in stocks or doing certain bad behavior is bad, we are, as I say, we criticize that expertise rather than following and supporting those people, sure. right? Because the, like my first particular said, no response whatsoever because it decreased the cost of the decision making, right? And I want to be part of that group because that guarantee my safety and that guarantee my uh, stable mental situation. That is why more people is going to use and follow the hard mentality rather than vice versa. And do you guys have any the problem? Okay, they are very quiet because they know they are losing. <laughs> guys, you must give me a more you know, information. <laughs> <I'm ready. laughs> yes. This is like called a lone person who is a dictatorship government and create democracy. Ask what happened in the past in no, South Korea. I, I think this is unfair. Find the people that someone says, I'm going to take your political freedom, your fucking freedom, your you know, money and everything. Why do you follow the dictatorship? Because everybody said to grow up my countries and you know make my countries stronger again, we must follow the dictator's word. What happens in the Germany? People is not going to follow Hitler just because I like Hitler's faces. People follow the Hitler because Hitler gave you the vision of the heart, vision of the Germany, vision of the nationality. That is why people's rationality taken away and people follow the dictator and Hitler and they do the many, many atrocity and stupid stuff like killing a lot of Jews, right? I think this is uh, enough response to the, you know, they are, you know, the, 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 the PY. But more than that, politics cause a lot of problems too. They said Bernie Sanders is the good example. No, I think Bernie Sanders is a stupid example, right? Many people said, I hate the Bernie Sanders. They cannot. If I'm the university student in USA, if I say, I hate Bernie Sanders and large groups of people is going to say, I hate you because you are not following what U.S. university, rational university student is doing wrong. We think that is wrong. But the bigger problem is the politicians lose their incentive and motivation, explain their politics, because they said this is what Republican represents for. This is what Democrat represents for. That is why people cannot find a good argument and good policy. They just follow what groups of people said. We think this is wrong. If you think that is right thing to do, then you should ask your high school teachers, you are you, you shouldn't learn, uh, you didn't learn you know, many, many, many democratic values. Okay, let's move on to my first argument. How the trend and TV advertisements harms individual happiness and value, right? Because currently, people follow the trend made by TV advertisement and big corporations. If you don't have a nice key, you are, you are dead. If you don't have a nice right, you are dead, right? We think this is the problem, right? Because some people don't need any cakes. Some people don't need any cars and right? and their big houses. But if I don't use my money to buy those expensive products, then probably I might be a bad person and I'm not be happy. But if you analyze yourself, probably you don't need those kind of expensive products. So it harms your happiness. More than that, we think this is a Korean problem, a world problem. We force our children to study harder than allowing them to explore and experience the real world. Everybody knows that it's a better thing to do, right? But because of her mentality, because of society, we can't provide the information and the opportunity to my children. We think this is bad, right? This is wrong because it harms the individual happiness and blocking us from finding a true <coughs> happiness and value. We think this is the problem. Mr. Speaker, we should follow the rationality of individuals. If individuals and society and human beings lose their rationality, we are not going to develop this much, right? That is why hurt mentality is harmful. For those reasons, I'm very proud to propose this. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Now let's have the Deputy Leader of the Board. Thank you,
Here Ladies and gentlemen, the government today makes two fundamental mistakes, which is why they continue to argue that herd mentality has been nothing for the, but a nuisance for the modern civilization of humanity. But we believe that the first, the first uh, fundamental mistake they're making is that they're underestimating the functions that we are born with. There are many functions that we are born with and that we don't recognize the value of. For example, our sense of balance, our sense of sight. Many of these things we are born with from the day we are born. We continue to live with them and we don't recognize the value that we have. But even so, we cannot live without them. They are they're crucial in maintaining our everyday lives. And I believe that the concept of her mentality or her mentality as a heuristic is very important for modern day human beings to function as everyday citizens. Without her mentality, we are unable to make many decisions based not only on rational choice as the government assumes, but because many people are unable to always make the most rational choice because they have limited information, we believe that it is sometimes important for these people to make the rational choice based on what other people are making within their social group. Now, secondly, we also believe that they are, under, they are confusing the no, thank you. They're confusing the concept of morality and herd mentality, ladies and gentlemen. People are not necessarily always born good. They are not always necessarily always born bad. And both good and bad deeds can come as a result of herd mentality. Many people be being good in a group such as the Ice Bucket Challenge can propel people to do good deeds. While, uh, while as they've mentioned again and again, by the, uh, they, they can also propel people to, bad, to do bad deeds. But the reason why we are able to counter these things is because, as our wonderful leader of opposition mentioned, we have a system called, called uh, counter mentality, which allows these individuals to overcome the irrationality of certain cases and therefore the result in ultimately a good case. So uh, the, the opposition today has one last argument, but before we move on to that, I'd like to refer to six points made by the government side, yes. But why do many people ignore the clear scientific evidences like global warming? Don't you think there is a consequence of all that? Well, this is exactly what I was talking about in my first point. Now, although there are some cases where people fail to act rational, in most cases, by following herd mentality, people are able to make the rational choice. You and I don't have the necessary scientific information to understand the whole, whole concept of global warming. However, because many scientists tell us that global warming is a real threat, we are able to follow that herd mentality and therefore make the rational choice. The people who don't believe are a small proportion of the population, and even those people can be persuaded if we have a strong enough herd mentality based on the rational opinion of intellectuals in our society. So, uh, as I was uh, moving on to my six rebuttals, firstly, they told us about how real herd mentality, objective rational thinking, would be possible for the general population. However, ladies and gentlemen, this is simply not true because, even because, especially in a modern society, we have a hyper complex society where it, for individuals it is impossible to gain all the information that we need to make a single rational choice. Therefore, what we have is something called, called a system of herd mentality where there are certain intellectuals, such as scientific scientists who, who study global warming, and these scientists are able Yes. Okay, why when people understand the certain fact, do you need influence of other people? Well, th this is because, it's in, uh, as I've mentioned, in a hyper-complex society, it's impossible for us to comprehend the, all the information that we are given. For example, in global warming, we can't simply understand the physics or the, the geo geophysics that are completely involved within this process. And therefore, it's, it's necessary for us to have certain intellectuals who we were able to believe and have all. And therefore, these intellectuals are able to create a certain herd mentality that leads us to make the right choices and the right beliefs. So as I was uh, mentioning, uh, basically, because we have a system of herd mentality where we are able to please follow these intellectuals, therefore that is why we are able to make rational choices in everyday lives. Not because we are able to absorb all the information and make rational choices on our own as a lone wolf. Now our second rebuttal is a direct rebuttal to how they talked about the, the harms of uh, harms of herd mentality. Now they told us that they, are, they will be able to solve problems uh, that, that are caused by herd mentality. However, we all, we, as we mentioned again and again, we believe that it is impossible for a lone wolf acting on his or her own decisions to solve a problem by his or herself. There needs to be a coalition, there needs to be a group of people who are able to have, involve in a positive form of herd mentality and tell, tell the people that this is wrong, that this is not this. All forms of collective action does not mean herd mentality. In many cases, good behavior, collective behavior happen because they all collectively have rationally thought out Well, we would like to argue the opposite for what you mentioned up till now. Because in many cases of, uh, this actually leads to our third uh, rebuttal, because they, they continuously talk to us about how dictators should form as a follower of the herd mentality. However, we would like to argue the opposite. In many cases, dictators should form as a, uh, as a consequence of rational thought. Because people in the higher, higher class of society, because they are able to persuade other people, because they are able to use their influence 
to create a, 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 an uprising and therefore, because they have an incentive to oppress the other people, actually dictatorships can be formed as a matter of rational thought. Therefore, we, we would like to argue that dictatorships or positive events, they're, they're not necessarily a, a, a cause of, or, or, or byproduct of uh, irrational thinking. Rather, they can be a, a result of both rational and irrational thinking. Now, they continuously, our former people are that they continuously told us about how investing stocks, they, that they failed to invest stocks because they listened to these modules that were talking on TV. However, we would like to argue that actually, statistically speaking, it is more probable that you are able to gain benefits rather than lose as a, a result of following these statistical models. Because the stock market is a hyper-complex system, therefore it is impossible for individuals to understand all the, the consequences of their own investments, it's actually more likely that you are able to make a benefit by following your mentality, by emulating the decisions of people of intellectuals within that business. <laughs> now, our last rebuttal is to, our rebuttal to their last argument about how they talked about how uh, the, their children won't be able to be happy because they aren't, aren't able to make their own choices. How would you argue that rational thought and happiness are not exactly concepts that are that should be mixed together, ladies and gentlemen? Just because you are happy does not mean you are rational. Just because you are irrational does not mean you are rational. There are completely different concepts, and even if you are following her mentality, there are plenty of ways that you could use to become happy, and even if you are making rational choices, there are plenty of ways to be unhappy with your own choices. So therefore, we believe that there are complete, there are argument mixes the concept of rational, rationality and happiness in a way that is undesirable. So moving on to our last argument, our last argument is about how her mentality up until, the, up until now, the opposition talked about how, from a big picture, about from a historical context, her mentality has been about how uh, uh, beneficial to society. However, I'd like to talk about from an individual perspective how her mentality can benefit individuals in everyday lives as well. Uh, the government has characterized her mentality as something that is irrational, something like the animal instincts of the past. However, we would like to argue that it acts as a heuristic and therefore it, uh, it, it helps us make everyday decisions in our lives. This is because, as the government prime minister mentioned, it reduces the cost of information seeking for individuals. In a hyper-complex society, as I mentioned again and again, the cost for obtaining information to make a single rational choice are way too high. Therefore, we rely on the decisions, on the, uh, the, the actions or the, the words of intellectuals who have inform enough information about certain complex topics in our society, and by following that information, we are able to actually make a rational decision. And therefore, because we are able to follow in many cases words of these intellectuals on an individual scale, her mentality actually facilitates rational decision making for individuals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. for seven minutes, sorry, nine seconds. Please uh, do like what watch your time here carefully. I'm speaking. May I please speak to the chair? Huh? May I please speak to the chair to the screen? Uh it's right up there, right? Yeah. You're not going next, right? No, I'm not. Are you the speaker? Yes. Uh, May I please take a very short picture? Okay. I think it will benefit everyone. I don't think we want to see a puddle of pee here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mr. Speaker, I'm pretty aware that you uh, know the legend of the lemmings rat. Uh, the herd of rats that simply follow the head of the herd, the 
and eventually falling off a cliff, not realizing what they're doing. The problem with a herd is that if the head lemmings get startled for some stupid reason and starts running in one direction, and the herd follows. And once you realize that you're falling off a cliff, you can't stop because every herd has momentum. So the herd on the back is pushing you towards the cliff until the whole herd falls off the cliff. We believe that there is an inherent difference between what we call herd mentality, that the motion is regretting, compared to what they're calling collective action. All collective action does not lead to all things being herd mentality. There's a distinctive difference. And we'll talk to you why inherently herd mentality is the definition of irrational, uninformed decisions, why irrational, uninformed decisions are bad for individuals and society as well and ultimately why these things, therefore, should be regretted. But before I go on, I'd like to rebut the final argument coming from the second speaker, because it doesn't fit into clashes. What he basically gave you is that, if you follow heuristics, basically he's saying that uh, it's a logical fallacy, if you haven't noticed, it's called uh, appeal to authority. We're three very old, scary people. It's almost like saying that you should vote for us because people tend to do so. We expect judges to be able to individually see the unique merits of each and every case to be able to come to a good conclusion. What they're saying is everyone else tends to like me because I'm scary or whatnot, I have a nice suit, so you should give us the win instead. That is a problem what her mentality does, because you're following everyone else's decision without giving self-reflection on what's going on. And we think this is the point that we really need to regret. There are three things that we'd like to uh, talk about today in the case of clashes. The first one is the inherent nature of herd mentality and therefore how it is bad for people to follow irrational, uninformed decisions. The second clash will be about the comparisons of unique and non-unique characteristics of herd mentality. The third will be the teleological utilitarian calculus of whether this is good or not, which will be relatively short, I assure you. Number one. They talked about how herd mentality is good because, well, you know, herd mentality makes it easy for us. That's exactly the problem of herd mentality. Easy doesn't mean good. They say it's natural. We also naturally like to kill each other if nobody's looking. We also like to rape people if we'll get away with it. We don't necessarily think that inherently natural things are good things. And yes, we have done this because our brains are lazy. If we want to make an important decision but we get scared, we see other people doing it, we have the confidence of masses and we eventually just follow things through. This is the whole point of my first speaker. We talked about bubbles, the 1980s Japanese real estate bubble. Why did that happen? Because everyone else is investing in real estate. Why did the 1997 Asian financial crisis happen? Because everyone said that, you know, huge conglomerates in Asia never failed, so everyone invested there. Why did the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis happen? Because everyone is investing in subprime mortgages, and we all know that house uh, markets never fail. We see that there are unique problems where people see these kind of things, please sit down, and their sole basis of decision is that everyone else is doing it. It's a tautology. They're saying it's good because everyone else is doing it, everyone else is doing it, so it's good. We think this inhibits the person from being able to think for themselves. If you saw the movie Big Short, by the way, you should, it's a really good movie. The character Christian Bale plays, he made a lot of money simply because he decided to not follow her mentality and actually look into the issues. That's how many of these things happen, because they overbloat themselves, because it's inherently irrational. If every single individual did something instead, something called the wisdom of the crowds, yes, collective ideas, individual, independent decisions as a collective usually tend to come to a median to give good results. The problem though is that there's a condition. You should not be influenced by other people's decisions because that impedes upon your rational decision making. That is herd mentality. And we believe that in any decision making, whether it be smart or stupid decisions or moral or immoral decisions, they should be decided upon your own merits and your own inter like them. Expected aspects of what goes on. The second class is this the uniqueness and non uniqueness of her mentality before I go on yesterday. When people are stupid enough to remember their own more, more rationality followed simply because the crowd is doing it, why do you say that without the crowd, they will turn to look up these information, look up the rationality care, and simply come back to the crowd? This is a false dichotomy. We're saying that they should look into the issues. We're saying that they are easily yeah. swayed away from that because there's a more convenient action of following the herd. That's what we regret. Second, <coughs> uniqueness versus non uniqueness. First, let's talk about the non uniqueness. They say that, well, you know, there's good things happening when people, like, herd up in the crowd. Two things. Number one, most of those things, as my POI has indicated, are mostly responses. They're cognitive, rational responses to the damage that happen because of herd mentality. Whenever you have the people that are going to occupy Wall Street, it's because they've been objectively fucked. 
after a irrational action that wiped their assets out. Whenever we want to vote for Bernie Sanders, it happened because irrational herd mentality led them to a certain direction and some candidate actually came up and gave them actually good policies that they were actually going to follow. But furthermore, let's assume that this is true. Let's say that good things happen. Is it good that you do certain good actions not because you genuinely believe that it is good, that you've introspected and thought this through, but rather because everyone else is doing it? I'll we'll do it because everyone else is doing it. Is that actually moral? Is that ethical? Is that sustainable? Because at the end of the day, we don't really think that morality is established that way as well. Rational enlightenment of philosophers that actually did the work to show you why certain behaviors are better or not is the basis of why we eventually come to moral behaviors. It's not because everyone else is doing it. You know, we used to burn witches. We don't really think that was an ethical moral behavior because simply everyone else is doing it. But second of all, the unique characteristics of her mentality are mostly bad. What am I talking about? Her mentality indicates an aspect of momentum because it gives a group uh, like you know, a group uh, like association mentality. It gives the reasons why people will do mob violence because, well, everyone else is doing it. I must be doing something wrong if I'm not joining. It becomes extremely dangerous for a person to do certain bad things because they're accountable. But when the whole group is doing it, then you can just fit into the crowd. That's why we have it. That's why we have Pol Pot. That's why we have Pak Chung. That's why we have all these other people. They're not smart to follow out, screw you over, and rape you, and take all your assets. They're doing it because everyone else is following so. And ultimately, therefore, it causes confirmation bias. As my second speaker said, whenever there is a voice of ra rational decision making, then people say you're wrong. Because people are already conditioned, as it is easy, to follow the herd. That makes bad decisions exceptionally more likely to happen, but not for good behaviors. Finally, this problem about this aspect of utility. Here's the interesting thing. They didn't give you a single point of why herd mentality does good things. Their only point was, there are bad things that happen from herd mentality, but we can counter that with herd mentality. If you look at the actual philosophical, like actual, you know, um, uh, uh, deductive argumentation of this, think of this clearly. If there was no bad behavior to counter from herd mentality in the first place, we wouldn't need good counter herd mentality. In that case, they can see that necessarily most of the bad things that we have in society happens because of herd mentality. We'll rather have nothing to have to counter in the first place. The herd mentality is the source of these yeah. problems. For these reasons, we're talking Gentlemen, that's not necessarily what her mentality is. That's what Leningrad's do, not people. Yes, sir. But 
It is, according to your second speaker, because you said that herd mentality is good because it's easier than actually being persuaded and educated and thinking for yourself. So I don't really know what you're talking so about. So basically, the reason why herd mentality is easier is because in many cases, when people spread around such ideas, they give you information that is pretty much tapped up. And basically also because, well, it's not easy to understand everything. For example, the example that we gave you, global warming. Obviously, I don't know everything about global warming. I, get, I listen to ideas that were made by experts. And I explain that since experts are reliable, I decide to go along go with that idea. It makes it easier, yes, and it's also rational. We don't think that easier and irrational are exactly the same thing. That's something that was also a problem coming from the team opposite, from the team proposition side. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, even if these people, let's say, are so stupid, let's think about what would happen if these people are so stupid that they simply don't think about the moral, moral ideas and they don't think rationally. Let's think about what would happen if they don't have her mentality. Would they suddenly become rational people? We don't think that that is the case. In fact, if we look at these people who are so immoral that they don't do the right thing even with her mentality, we think that it would cause even more problems without her mentality, which is also a problem that we see, which is also a reason why we think that her mentality is necessarily beneficial. So the major problem coming from team proposition is that they begin to face those they serve with the basic idea, the basic characterization that her mentality is completely irrational, that nobody thinks that they follow, follow her mentality, and they simply go, yeah, that's, the, that's their idea, I just follow that idea. We think that that's not the case, and therefore, this, this is why the entire case, from the proposition side, falls from the very, very beginning of their characterization, no thank you, sir. Which is why we think this first class show, because we prove to you today that her mentality isn't necessarily irrational, it can be rational, and it usually is rational to a certain extent, and which is why we think this first class show, no thank you, sir. On to the second class show, what the results are societal. Now, today we've heard from Team Proposition that her mentality necessarily leads to violent actions and it leads to supporting dictatorships, and that's why it's causing such a big problem. Several of the response. First of all, first of all we don't think that this is not necessarily true. We don't think that all violent actions are a result of her mentality. We don't think that violent, her mentality always leads to do violent, violent actions. No thank you, sirs. So let's, so let's talk about this. There are immoral people in the society, right? There are murderers, there are rapists. Yeah, right. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, these people are people who follow her mentality. As a matter of fact, if they follow her mentality, they follow the idea that, that such acts are immoral and such acts are wrong. That's the basic moral mentality that we have in our society today. So we think that their idea about how it's going to necessarily lead to bad actions all the time isn't always necessarily true. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, nothing is served. We think that there was a very severe mischaracterization coming from side propositions side today. Because they told us that, well, Shooting blacks and keeping those black people as slaves, and also burning witches, were all her mentality. Not necessarily, not necessarily true. Because the reason why such events happened was, first of all, because that was basically the law in the state in that situation. We don't think that her mentality equals the law, those things are. But also, secondly, ladies and gentlemen, because these people were born into that kind of society, they were born into that kind of belief. For example, if you if you were born into a Christian family, that doesn't necessarily mean that you were influenced by her mentality and that's why you believe in Christianism. It's because you were born into that kind of environment. We think we don't think that her mentality necessarily creates that kind of situation. We don't think that was a very severe mischaracterization coming from team proposition, yet there's simply cherry picking examples that were necessarily that do not necessarily fit this motion just to serve your case, nothing you serve. But thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, as we constantly explain to you from team opposition, it's her mentality that fixes those kinds of problems as well. Because as a, because those kinds of dictatorships, those kinds of valid actions, exactly. were all criticized by her mentality. And which is why we believe today that such, a, such actions are wrong. Because due to her mentality, we know that such actions could lead to more problems in the future. We think that her mentality is what fixes those problems. Exactly. We don't think that that's we think that that was something that wasn't necessarily responded to by side of side policy today. But fourth, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, it doesn't always lead to such bad results. For example, ladies and gentlemen, in the past, in the past of South Korea, there was a very severe dictatorship regime, right? And we think that it's her mentality that ended up fixing that. They told us that her mentality isn't necessarily the same thing as collective action. Yes, that's true. It's her mentality that leads to collective action. Because, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. if many people believe that dictatorship is wrong, and if many people believe that, believe that democratic reform is necessary, that's when people begin to join on that kind of idea and bring about a big change for the better. We think that it's her mentality that brought upon that kind of collective movement, and that's the exact reason why it has, we have a better society in today, ladies and gentlemen. That is why we think it's second class show. Because we've proven to you today that the results are not always valid, the results that are valid are fixed by her mentality, and that we also have very beneficial results that have not been responded to by side proposition today. On to the third class, about the results on individual 
they try to stop people making stupid mistakes in the stock market, and that's a big problem, right? But the thing is that, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, the only thing that's always been necessary, necessarily because of her mentality, but it's a game. You think that people make stock market mistakes in the stock market, anyways. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, even so, we think that it's because these people listen to these experts that most people gain better results than they would have if they didn't. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if, if they didn't follow her methods. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if I wanted to vote to go into the stock market, I don't know anything about the stock market, and therefore, I, I, I make a very huge mistake, or I just wouldn't go there. But the thing is, because we have experts that tell us that, well, maybe this is a bad idea, we should consider this. That's the reason why I do go into the market, and that's the reason why I, why I in some cases, I might be able so because they think that the motion is not about making mistakes on the stock market, it's about following, following morality and following your ideas based on the ideas of others as well. I'm extremely proud to oppose the motion. Fault. Thank you very much. Let's the opposition reply to wrap up the case for the opposition. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes plus thirty seconds of grace. Can begin when you're ready. Mr. Speaker, I respect these three people as people. <laughs> the problem with this case is that they have a certain level of mendacity. They have a certain level of characterization that they try to. Continually abused in order to win this debate. The problem is, Mr. Speaker, the whole characterization that come from the government side bench was that herd mentality is the crux of evil. Herd mentality in every single situation is bad, and every single evil that exists in justice, that exists in today's status quo, in today's society, is there because of herd mentality. The thing is, Mr. Speaker, we've shown you that this isn't true, and we know by my logic that this is not true. So, firstly, we want to take on why we win this debate first of all. Firstly, we want to tell you again and again. Despite their discharacterizing their uh, malicious discharacterizations, we have told you from the beginning that the system of herd mentality is not necessarily different for collective action. While it is not directly causational, there is a correlation in offense. Just because some people have, people are rational, we, we operate under the presumption that there are rational people in this speaker. The fact is, when you, when you operate under that presumption, you can never say that it's because there is a herd mentality that cancels out the rationality. The thing is, when people operate, there are people who are rational, that fight for a rational cause, fight for the human rights cause, that are more powerful, that are given power, that are given momentum by the herd mentality. And we've shown you in many cases throughout history, those cases were the majority. But even if it was, Mr. Speaker, we showed you, even if it was the people were rats and people were stupid people who just followed what the majority said, we do not think that their characterization in the opposite stance of where there exists no word mentality is a world of utopia, is a world of morality, is a world of rainbows and ponies, Mr. Speaker. We think that the thing is, the opposite of a world without uh, this kind of apathy is a world of apathy, is a world of stigma, world of dis discare. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because there are problems in this world, and there are many injustices that occur not because of our mentality, because this world is fucked up, because this world is impractical, it's not perfect. We have cases such as with dictatorships, twisted minds, people who actually oppress their people, not because the people support it, but because emotionally and because of her mentality, but because they had a military coup, they had a junta, their legitimacy is not based on public opinion, but because they have more power, because they are driven by uh, certain numbers of rational people who have more money, who have more power. In these certain cases, Mr. Speaker, where there are these, where there are these kind of problems, we've shown you in the majority of cases, it is very hard for a lone wolf, a single person with a moral conscience, to go against that government. Yeah. You see, in these cases, when there are social movements, it's never mutually exclusive with concurred mentality. It's because other people also hate that fucked up government that they go against it. You see other people and you get courage, and that's why you act, and that's how these dictatorships that are there go out, and that is what happened through history again and again and again, and that is what lead to, lead to, lead to our democratic society. And we've shown you, even the cases where they are formed by herd mentality, when there's injustice because of herd mentality, it always is cancelled out, it always is burned to the ground, because the majority of people are moral, the majority of people tend to be empathized. And even under the circumstances where people are blind rats that follow simply the more, more majority, we believe and even in that comparative, because the majority tends to be rational people, because we see through inductive reasoning, through that what happened through history, it is because people are more likely to follow the moral path, even in their characterization. Lastly, we 
talk to you about worse cases. We talk to you about cases that are not severe such as social injustice, but cases such as uh, global warming, cases where disasters exist, people get hurt. In these cases, the opposite of hurt mentality is not morality and utopia. It's apathy, Mr. Speaker. We believe in these circumstances, in these micro-level situations where global warming exists, where people are hurt, where people are born with Alzheimer's disease, uh, with all the virus kind of diseases, is majority is because the majority of people are rational, majority of people are empathetic, these people are driven to help these people. We've seen that the various charity organizations, the UN and everyone uses this kind of propaganda in order to you know, people and often cases it works we see the ALS bucket challenge. And we see even Mr. Speaker in the global warming market that actually the majority of people who believe that global warming is happening and do their recycling and don't try to make their cars to work. Mr. Speaker, in today's society we believe that there are much more benefits that come from this kind of herd mentality. And that the current mentality is not mutual exclusive for morality, nor rationality, but is a very powerful tool that can give the momentum to achieve a more moral, a more rational, and a more just society. This is why the government bench cannot, will not, must not be able to Now, close the debate, let's have the government reply. We believe we deserve fair evaluations, and that fair evaluation was not delivered or guaranteed by the opposition. Because we never argued on our side of the house that herd mentality was the source of the problems with international society. What we argued was that this often amplifies problems and often directs these kinds of evils much more likely to happen. And in that sense, we think we proved and fulfilled our burden in showing you the uniqueness of herd mentality as well as what kinds of harms that arises in society. And show and gave you a comparison. Well, there was nothing to compare because they didn't provide much examples to begin with. But one important question that we think needs to be clarified is whether her mentality, whether in other words the good things, the good deeds in which they argue are actually a result of her mentality. And our response was this, and we clearly refuted and we told you that good acts are often capable and more likely to happen within, yeah. on, individual, on an individual basis. Whereas when it comes to bad acts that we talked about, this often requires herd mentality in order to trigger individuals to engage in these kinds of acts. Which is why it's much more likely for herd mentality to result in bad acts as opposed to good acts from the beginning. Another example that the opposition relied on extensively was that the, a lot of the social movements that we have in society are a result of herd mentality. But we clearly showed you, Mr. Speaker, and this has been rebutted throughout our speakers, that often these kinds of actions, collective actions, are often a result of careful deliberation, coordination, and organized yeah. behavior after a lengthy discussion, which is why they are able to mobilize such mass movements. But the thing is this, they cannot argue that this is her mentality when they themselves characterize her mentality as a choice when individuals make because they don't have enough information, Mr. Speaker. They themselves conceded that her mentality is often a choice in which individuals make because it's simply easier. They don't have adequate information. But the problem that we pointed out was that when everyone in that group doesn't have adequate information, when a single trigger event, for, I don't know, but based on what butterfly effect, an individual makes the wrong choice and everyone relies on others and that group to make that choice for them, this takes away the opportunities of individuals to make rational decisions. Now, we don't accept that their case was about how herd mentality encourages individuals to make rational choices, right? Because that is something that they said. Eventually, if that's the case, they undermine their own stance in which people are making these choices because it's easier to do so. And as a result, we think in terms of the correct characterization, side off, side government clearly takes this. Okay, right. and then there are a lot of arguments that we've told you, Mr. Speaker, right? This presents objective analysis, it lines the issue, it often leads to extreme senses of violence because often individuals would not act in these kinds of ways when they are on a, when they are alone, right? And we told you that in order for individuals to act in these kinds of inhumane ways, they often need other people to justify them. And another important point that we think that was never touched upon by side opposition was NC's super killer argument. This argument made a significant difference. And that argument was, 
individual happiness. When individual happiness is often defined by media and the groups of society and individuals, as opposed to making their own calculus of their own construction of what happiness is, and they rely on the people to make those choices for them, and when everyone cannot ascribe, subscribe to, and attain that kind of level of happiness, this significantly undermines the happiness of every individual. It would be easier for individuals to simply say, that I don't subscribe to that. But when everyone is encouraged to do so, to believe that buying a better car or like sending their children to a great university is ultimately the best thing, we tell you that individual happiness and a society, the utility of society as well, is undermined. Mr. Speaker, we think that we need to take this debate. Russell Floyd, shake hands, and we are decided to the decision.